So in this video, we're going to talk about the relationship between uh, tangential velocity and tangential acceleration as it applies to circular motion and, in fact, harmonic motion in general, such as the motion of pendulums and the motion of uh, springs, so a mass oscillating on a spring. So uh, I've recopied these equations down here and uh, recopied my unit circle. So I want you to note one thing that's maybe a little bit different here, uh, and that is that the x and y axes are actually uh, vx, the x velocity, and the y velocity. So I want to draw a velocity vector. It is a tangential velocity. So for example, if I were to draw this green vector right there, as indicated over this way, if I were to redraw that on this diagram, it would be extending up into the second quadrant. For ease of use, let's keep everything in the first quadrant. So here is my velocity vector. Uh, it's a tangential velocity. It has an x component, which we'll draw out to there and label the x. It has a y component, we'll label that the y. Now, uh, that velocity vector proceeds according to uh, time. So for example, that angle between here, between the x and the y uh, axes here, could be measured as omega t. In fact, we see that over here in these equations. If we were to draw a uh, tangential acceleration vector, the tangential acceleration vector is of course going this way, because it's swinging that velocity around. So the velocity stays in a circle. It's at a right angle, and this acceleration vector, of course, has both x and y components. So there's the y component, there is the x component, so we'll label that a sub x, a sub y. Now, we need to understand here that um, uh, if we're going to relate these two figures, uh, we also have this progression of uh, angular acceleration according to omega t, that's the same angle. And then we just have to do some labeling here. So vx compared to v in this diagram, you know, so ignore these two equations at the top for the moment, vx is equal to the magnitude of v times cosine omega t. vy is equal to the magnitude of v times sine omega t. All right. Well, if we write ax and ay in the same way, ax is equal to the magnitude a uh, times what? Well, it's actually going negative here, so it goes negative a times sine omega t. It is opposite of the angle, and ay is positive. It's going upward, and so we would write that as a times cosine omega t. So now when we put all this stuff together, we need to also remember that the tangential acceleration is related to the tangential velocity. Uh, how? By uh, writing tangential velocity times the angular velocity. So uh, how does all that work? Well, uh, if we remember that the magnitude of the tangential velocity looks like r omega, we can write r omega squared is equal to the tangential acceleration. So now if we do a substitution, we find that um, the x component looks like negative r omega squared sine omega t. The y component looks like positive r omega squared cosine omega t. Uh, so as you can see, these components here, um, whoops, bear with me for a moment, I grabbed the wrong ones. These components, these are the ones, the vx. So in the given diagram, if vx is described by a cosine function, ax is described by a sine function, in fact by a negative sine function. And in the given diagram, if um, vy is described by a sine function, ay is described by a cosine function. So 
there's this real interesting progression that I'm going to summarize for you. Uh, generally speaking, if, let's just deal with x for a moment, x, vx, that's not an x, vx, and ax, so if x looks like a sine omega t in harmonic motion, vx is going to look like omega a cosine omega t, and ax will look like negative omega squared a sine omega t. If for some reason we have another, uh, let's say that a x is equal to um, a cosine omega t from what we have above, then vx will look like, watch carefully, negative, uh, let's keep everything in the same order, omega a sine omega t, and a x will equal negative omega squared a cosine omega t. So um, you can, if, if this isn't quite convincing enough, uh, you can go back through this uh, screencast, look at these. Uh, remember these were sort of a starting point uh, for comparison. But you can see how all of this is derived. Uh, and you can see from some other lectures how this particular relation, v is equal to r omega, or a is equal to v omega, are derived. We will be using all of these little factoids, especially this stuff, the relationship between x, vx, and ax. So magnitude, angular velocity times the magnitude, angular velocity squared times the magnitude, to extract maximum velocities and maximum accelerations.